The problem is now we have the state responding to this minority of professionally offended people on Twitter who are largely feminists to actually police ideas and free speech. This is where it gets really scary and Kafkaesque because just about a week or two ago, Janet Bloomfield, the founder of the Women Against Feminism hashtag on Twitter, had her account suspended merely for disagreeing with a feminist, Jessica Valenti, who wrote in The Guardian that Christmas was oppressive to women. What happened was a bunch of, an army of feminists contacted Twitter, claimed that she was spamming when she obviously wasn't, and they got her account shut down. There was also a fitness instructor, Maria Kang, who took a picture of herself um, in good shape with her three children as a kind of female empowerment mind over matter message, you know, genuine female empowerment. Of course, the feminists hate that. So then they went on this crusade to label her as a, a thought criminal. She was banned from Facebook for her hate speech of encouraging women to be fit and healthy and saying that they can live fit and healthy These lives. These people are not children. crazy. They are classic totalitarian authoritarians who want to be able to tell us how to think, what to say, what to do. And their main army are these women who were tricked to not need men, to be part of the system. And if a woman wants to be in the system and not have a man, that's their issue. But to do it as if they've joined the, the special forces and this is their big crusade, and then to go around and henpeck other women that have children in Whole Foods, which they do, you shouldn't have two kids, you shouldn't have three kids, to do nothing about the true sexualization of women that the system's engaged in, these are women that bought into the system and now hate other happy, empowered women. This is nothing but a vampire-like cult of scum. Yeah, that's exactly it. Third, third wave feminism has nothing to do with equality and everything to do with social engineering. This is what it's all about. And they will contradict the very biological truths of human nature and biology. They will claim and they will write books that men are only attracted to um, good-looking women because they've been brainwashed by the diet and cosmetic industry, not because they're, you know, healthy-looking, fertile, and genuinely attractive. Apparently, we should be, you know, attracted to fatties and people who are really out of shape and unhealthy, and we're not, uh, just because we've been brainwashed by the diet industry, which shows you the insanity, the total vacuum of logic that these feminists imbue when they go on these kind of crusades. And when it becomes a threat to free speech, when police are saying they will now investigate people for making jokes on Twitter about fat people or jokes about Ebola patients, it, it's downright terrifying, as the leftist London Guardian, uh, London Independent writer said in his column. That's right, and let's be clear, Paul, this is all selective. A seven-year-old in art project draws a picture of his dad who's in the army with his M16, when they say on career day, draw a picture of your father and your mother, he gets kicked out of school, suspended for a week, criminally investigated. That's a real case I just mentioned, one of many. But you can go to after-school events and play Call of Duty where you're simulating the death of thousands or World of Warcraft where you're chopping people's heads off. It's only the system is allowed to put these images out then if you do anything, I mean, it's okay for Quentin Tarantino to have movies with the N-word in it and, you know, movies with men raping men and everything else, because that's art. But see, they say what's art. When it's their art, then it's socially okay. Uh, when um, the, the, the gay community wants to use uh, words uh, you, that then you get arrested for using in the UK if you're, quote, not part of the club... It's not just discrimination against free speech. It's creating a new royalty class where these politically correct groups nest within the overall power structure. And so they're a protected system that's given little goodies, indulgences, given royal patronage so that others will then want to join the guild. I mean, this is, this is cult programming. It's, it's pure cultural Marxism. It's the belief that oppression comes from within the culture and not from the state. And so then they join with the state and get those little goodies that you talked about. And it's, it's evident in Gamergate, which was, uh, it basically emerged that all these top feminists in leaked email conversations were attempting to subvert the gaming industry 
to push their own social engineering And messages. it was confirmed that they've been able to do it. Yeah. And, you know, th their, their claims are completely spurious, like there are no positive female characters in video games. Somebody made a video literally listing two, three hundred positive female characters in video games over the past two decades. So it's completely without foundation. And it's this authoritarian zeal to make society conform around their belief system, which is ultimately a way of putting them on top of the power structure, you know, in their ivory towers. So it has nothing to do with equality and everything about them um, hoisting it over everybody else, telling us what we can think, what we can say, and again, completely conflicting against the very biological, innate human nature that we all share with each other. Well, yeah, final comment on the previous subject. The good news is that 77% of American women, according to a poll last year, don't identify as feminist. The problem is feminists have got control of large portions of the media, which is why when any public figure is criticized with the, by them, immediately apologizes. We saw the ridiculous fiasco with Well, let, well I mean, let me just say time. that all of the establishment transhumanist uh, feminists can go to hell. I'll never apologize to them. They are a bunch of scum who hate strong women and don't want women to be armed against criminals. They're a bunch of filth who want women alone, wards of the state. Sorry, Paul, we're going to go to a break, come back with the pedophile stuff. You've got the floor. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly. Kaylee Kuoko, this TV star, came out and said, I like being with my husband. I like cooking for him. I like looking after my children. I mean, God forbid, the reaction was overwhelming. She was castigated by feminists, and she had to come out and apologize. You know, feminists would love North Korea because, you know, if you don't profess your faith, your belief in the dear leader and all his dogmas, then you will be silenced. That's the kind of authoritarian society they want in the West. That's why we should oppose it at every turn. Well, that's right, Kurt Nemo wrote about it. A feminist posts hateful tweets after actress says she loves serving her husband. But, of course, the flip side is her husband, I guarantee you, loves serving her. That's like when you scrub your wife's back or she scrubs yours or you may, or my family comes over and I grill steaks or, or, or you know, then my wife would cook dinner. I, I mean, it's not about someone's a slave, but they put this idea out there that if you ever help your neighbor or you ever stand up for somebody, you somehow are losing out. This is because they all want us totally alone. And let's face it, nothing against what you'd call classically unattractive women. Because if a woman is exciting and funny and neat, even if they're not classically Marilyn Monroe beautiful, I see, you know, beauty in them. If a person's old and has aged, you know, gracefully and is a loving spirit, there's something beautiful about how old they are and their twisted, you know, joints, like an old twisted tree can be beautiful. But if they're an ugly old person in their heart, the ugliness, like a stained glass window, projects that ugliness in a macabre fashion. But I'll tell you, at the heart of this is a bunch of women that don't feel successful, who are part of a cult guild in the state, who hate good-looking women. I've experienced it. I've seen it firsthand. And it isn't that they're lesbians. It isn't that they're attracted to women sexually, though some are, and there's a you know large percentage higher than the average rate of lesbians in the feminist movement. They want to conquer classically hot, uh, virile's a male term, but... Uh, you know, powerful, fem truly feminine women, it is a conquering. Feminist, everybody knows women on average dress up for other women. Women are in competition with women on average. It is, it is a sect of women trying to dominate other women and trying to become a classical male role that they claim they are trying to get rid of. They're not trying to kill the king to get rid of monarchy. They're trying to kill the king to make themselves the king the Janet Renos, the Big Sisses, uh, the Mr. Maddows. And I call them out. That's all. They want to wear the pants. They want to be John Wayne. And so they want to assassinate men and then assassinate real women so they can sit up there and build the world in the image of Janet Reno. Well, guess what? The world don't like that and doesn't want you, filth. You got it? So go to hell. Excuse me. Go ahead, Walt Paul. Yeah, generally speaking... There's, I mean, the women in their 20s who I talk to see right through it. They don't, they're not feminists. They don't identify it. But it's, it's generally unhappy women, and this applies to men too, who, as you said, are jealous of fertility, jealous of younger women. They've missed out on having kids, getting married. 
having success. They joined a death cult. They want fluoride in the water. They want GMO. They want sterilization. They don't believe in having kids. They hate life. We know who you are. Go ahead. Sorry, Paul. Yeah, so if, if they want to get into their 30s and 40s and engage in this misandering... They're attacking they the goddess. Life. And I don't get into that in a religious way. They hate the goddess. They hate the goddess. That's who these people are. They are devils. Sorry, Paul, go ahead. Yeah, and if, if they want to live unhappy lives, then that's their business. But don't, don't then try and take away my free speech by claiming that I, I have male privilege or white privilege and that my free speech is invalidated because of my gender or skin color. That is at its root sexist and racist. So that's when they become an actual threat to the society and to free speech. Well, they're projecting, they're projecting. We're libertarians, we're live and let live. We don't care about them. We're not, we don't care, but they care, they care. I mean, I've seen it with these modern fascist so-called liberal women. They get mad at families, they get mad at women. You know, you know, dress classically, but everybody's looking at the woman dressed classically. There's a reason women dress like that in every culture, because it's powerful. They don't want women and men having innate human power. They're anti-human. They want a bunch of anti-human devils in their state-run monopolies to have all the symbols of power. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life.